ओके सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू बी डिस्कसिंग अ केस ऑफ इलीगो हाइड्रामिया सो इट्स एन इमेजनरी केस ओके सो लेट्स जस्ट से दैट देयर इज अ फीमेल अ प्रेगनेंट वुमेन वुमेन हु कम्स टू एट थर्टी फोर वीक्स ऑफ जस्ट स्टेशन विद रिड्यूस्ड किक काउंट ओके और वी कैन से रिड्यूस फीटल मूवमेंट्स अकॉर्डिंग टू हर एंड देन यू एसेस हर एंड ऑन असेसमेंट यू रियलाइज दैट हर सिंफिस ऑफ फंडल हाइट इज एक्चुअली of 29 weeks okay so her fundal height is decreased so what is this case we are going to suspect oligohydramnios uh, basically this can lead to a lot of differentials but our main concern in this case is uh, to talk about oligohydramnios so how are we going to approach this case on history taking the first thing if there is a discrepancy between the uh, her gestational age and her uh, fundal height you are going to rule out wrong dates okay this is going to be your first concern okay wrong dates and then the second thing that uh, if now you are going to rule this out now dates are basically correct okay dates were correct now the second question that you are going to ask are basically the questions for oligo hydramnios okay so what are going to be those questions is there any leakage okay any watery discharge any leakage uh, from uh, her uh, vagina any clear discharge to rule out uh, prom p prom rupture of membrane and then you also have to ask about uh, her kick count whether she has actually you know kept a record any record she has kept or any markings like how does she know like maybe the uh, her assessment is wrong maybe her kick count is normal maybe her fet fetal movements is normal right now we are not undergoing any investigation we are not undertaking any investigation we just talk about the history okay next question that you going to ask her okay now i'm going to ask her about her drug usage okay is she a user of nsaids or has she taken any ace inhibitors which are you know totally absolutely contraindicated in a pregnant woman okay but maybe she does not know maybe she is taking them for her pre existing hypertension or does she have any history of eclampsia or pre eclampsia or any previous diagnosis or any hypertensive uh, disorder or does she smoke why are we asking all these questions we are asking all these questions to uh, you know uh, take our attention towards fetal growth uh, restriction or intrauterine growth retardation or any you know placental insufficiency okay so now basically we are also going to ask her about any you know foul smelling discharge or any uh, itching to rule out infection any fever or anything like that because you know infection can also play a role so all these questions we are going to ask now basically what is going to be there on examination when we are going to examine the patient as i have already mentioned in the scenario her fundal height is going to be smaller than dates and since uh, basically you know normally let's say that this is the baby and the baby is floating in fluid so when you you know touch it you basically feel a very you know distended abdomen in a pregnant female but if let's say that the fluid has decreased and now this is the baby this is totally imaginary uh, okay uh, okay so basically uh, what are you going to feel you're going to feel hard fetal poles okay hard poles are going to be felt and you can easily feel the baby and basically the abdomen is going to be small and what else is going to be there there also can be okay one other uh, uh, okay let's just discuss that later hard poles are also going to be there and the baby might be having a mal presentation the baby might actually be breech this is a very common question that what is the commonest mal presentation associated with the ligo that is a breech presentation okay so basically um The first thing that we had in the scenario was that the symphysal fundal height was less than the gestational age. So let's just discuss in detail that what are the causes for this condition. The first thing can be wrong dates, okay, as I mentioned before, and one more thing uh, can be oligohydramnios, as we have talked about it, and there can also be you know separately mal presented baby. with full fluid that you know maybe you're not able to assess this properly properly so uh, properly so mal presentation can also be the cause okay so uh, we have discussed the history taking we have discussed the examination now what else are we going to talk about we're going to do ultrasonography now what is going to be there on ultrasonography so basically when we are considering oligohydramnios what happens 
so in oligohydroamnios we on ultrasound we consider amniotic fluid index and the uh, single deepest pool or the vertical pool so these are the two things that we look at in an ultrasound the amniotic fluid index and this the the vertical deepest pool or single deepest pool or the pocket okay so basically i am actually not uh, sure about the process of how we calculate the amount of amniotic fluid but um, I might be wrong. This is the uterus, and we divide it into four quadrants. And now, in every quadrant, we measure the amniotic fluid. And in every quadrant, we measure the amniotic fluid, and then we we add it, or we you know I don't know, maybe use a formula, and then we come up with an amniotic fluid index. And then this vertical pool is basically the deepest pocket. Okay, the deepest pocket in all of these. What is the amount of fluid in the deepest pocket? That is a single vertical pool. I basically, I am the single deepest pool. Okay. I'm actually not sure about how this calculation is done, but these are the two measures. Okay, so the values should be known. The normal value of amniotic fluid index on ultrasound is five to twenty-five centimeters. Okay, and of the single deepest pocket is two to eight centimeter. Now, in case of oligohydroamnios, it becomes less than five centimeter the AFI, and the single deepest pool becomes less than two centimeter. Okay, five and two, and five and twenty-five is normal for this, and two and eight is normal for this the single deepest pool. Uh, let's just not consider poly. Forget about this for a second. And now, absolute amount, like total amount, when it is less than two hundred mL, you are going to call this as oligo. So, what is when you are defining oligo? You are not just going to say that decrease in amount of amniotic fluid. Okay, you are a doctor. You are going to say that okay, the first thing is that the amniotic fluid index is less than five centimeter, and the single deepest pool is less than two centimeters, and the absolute amount is less than two hundred milliliter. Any of these is fulfilled. Then maybe the examiner is going to ask what are the normal values. Then you are going to say that the normal amniotic fluid index is from five to twenty five, and the normal single uh, deepest pool is from two to eight centimeter. Okay. You can also take it as percentile, okay? Less than fifth percentile of amniotic fluid index. Okay. So uh, we have talked about the history. We have talked about the examination and investigation. So we're gonna do an ultrasound to confirm, and you are also going to look for any anomaly in the ultrasound because you know the causes can be fetal and the maternal. And in history, we ask about the maternal causes mainly. Are you taking any drugs? You know, is there any leakage of fluid and stuff like this? Basically, there can be renal anomaly, there can be urinary tract anomaly, and um, which will be visible on the ultrasound. Okay. Also, if we are suspecting any, uh, you know, leakage, any leakage is suspected, then in case of that, we're going to do a per speculum examination, and we are going to find clear fluid in the posterior blade of our speculum. Okay. So now, basically, uh, you have uh, taken now uh, the history and you have done the examination. Now, how are you going to manage the patient? Okay. So basically, what you're going to do is you're going to manage the patient. Uh, with amniotic infusion, usually you go for bed rest so that the kidneys are well perfused and the you know fluid balance is maintained. Just bed rest, conservative management can be done if it is not very severe. Now uh, you can do amniotic infusion. Uh, you can give her three hundred mL. The reference is DC data for this. This is not written in ten teachers of warm saline and warm saline. And basically after that you're going to do a repeat ultrasound. Okay. Uh, maybe there are other options, but these are the only things that I know, and none of these has been mentioned in ten teachers. This is from um, DC data, as I have said before. Okay, so this is it. So, what are the possible complications? What can happen? As we know that uh, amniotic fluid is very important to protect the fetus from any sort of uh, trauma and any additions. So, basically, we can have um, uh, additions. Oh, we can also have abortion, or uh, not like she can miscarry, and you know the fetal demise can occur and uh, limbs this is the baby now so the limbs are going to undergo contractures limb contractures and then you're gonna have pulmonary hypoplasia okay lungs will be undeveloped because after 16th week what contributes towards the synthesis of amniotic fluid uh, is the balance between the swallowing and the urination okay so that comes from the kidneys and lungs also pass participate mainly kidneys synthesize this uh, but also lungs also participate in it. It's very important for lung maturation. Okay. 
and what else can occur uh, basically uh, there is a higher oh, one more thing that i have to mention a fetal growth restriction as i said it is also we are also supposed to take history to uh, consider fetal growth restriction what happens is if that if there are these things that um, uh, there is a decreased head circumference and there is decreased abdominal circumference and then there is oligohydroamnios. Uh, then we are going to say that if both of these are decreased, then this is a symmetrical growth retardation. We are going to talk about growth retardation in a separate uh, discussion, but you should know that growth retardation can be symmetrical and non-symmetrical. In symmetrical, head and abdomen both are reduced. So in normal life, we like symmetry, na? symmetrical things are good. But remember, in case of growth restriction, symmetry is lethal. Asymmetry is better. Always remember that. So symmetrical uh, growth restriction with oligohydramnios means that there is a chromosomal abnormality. Okay? If head circumference was high and abdominal circumference was low, this would be asymmetrical growth restriction and you will be like asymmetry asymmetry is bad na in real world asymmetry is not that good but as i mentioned before for a fetus if you're talking about fgr asymmetry is much better because this means that head is larger than the rest of the body including the abdomen which means that brain has been developed okay we can brain is saved we call it this brain sparing effect so if there is asymmetry in fgr brain sparing effect is present and this is better than symmetrical okay so we have discussed the complication yeah one more thing just a moment okay so what else is going to be happen uh, going to happen is that there is a greater chance of membrane rupture and during labor labor is going to be more painful and longer i don't know why is this i don't know the mechanism behind this but this is like uh, what the values tell us that there is a higher chance of increased uh, pain in labor and longer duration of labor and there is of course there is going to be malpresentation as I said malpresentation is very common with the LIGO and breach is very common uh, this is a very important question so maybe you have to do c-section for that so surgical intervention is also higher in oligohydramnios okay this is that